Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of my career mode series. So far we've made purchases in about every area that we need except for fullbacks and one of the fullbacks that I was really looking to buy was uh, David Alaba. He plays for Bayern Munich and he's one of my favorite players on the game. He's really fast, he has really good crossing ability uh, and he can also play as a center attacking mid, a winger. He's just really versatile and just a really good player to play with. And there he is, David Alaba, 5 million pounds and 35,000 pounds wages. Uh, he's not really all that expensive, uh, his transfer, but the wages are what's really going to get us. So I went ahead and put in the full 5 million pound offer, and because it's pretty close to the end of the transfer window. Uh, as you'll see here in a second, we're going to get to the transfer deadline day. And I really want to secure his signature before the end, and we're running out of time. And there it is, the transfer deadline day. I really like how they broke it down into hours on this game because before it felt like just any other day, but we all know that transfer deadline day isn't like every other day. There's so many deals that go down. And here's one. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen has accepted our offer for Baron Leno, so we're going to go ahead and go to his contract offer, and we're going to give him a pretty substantial offer because we want to tie this up pretty quickly. We don't have much time. So we're going to give him uh, 45,000 pounds, four years, and tell him that he's a crucial player. So we're going to send that contract offer off and just... Pray to the gods that he accepts it, because we are in dire straits with Tremel. He is just really, really bad. And our offer for David Alaba has been turned down. They want £7 million for him. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to lower the offer transfer sum to £3 million. And we're going to offer them a player along with that uh, of comparable value. And since we're getting a defender from them, I thought if we gave them a defender back that we don't use, uh, it would sweeten the deal. And someone that we don't use since we got a quarry is the 25-year-old Spanish center back Chico. Those horrible, horrible dreadlocks, those uh, cornrows, that's what they're called. God, those things are just so ugly. I thought that was a uniquely American phenomenon, but apparently not. So we're going to try to send him off and get a vastly superior defender in his place. Uh, but Baron Leno, uh, he declined our contract offer, and there's just not enough time to go back and forth. He doesn't want to leave where he's at, so we're just going to give up. And we're going to have to deal with Trimmel for the rest of the season until January. And also, our offer for David Alaba has been turned down. Um, they just don't want Chico, and so we're going to try to give them the $7 million that they want, uh, clear Chico off the board, and hopefully they accept that. But one of the other fun things about Transfer Deadline Day is just the headlines that come up. And one of those headlines that I thought was really interesting was Bayern Munich was looking to get Aguero and Falcao to bolster their attack. I know they just got rid of Gomez to Chelsea, but, I mean, that's just ridiculous. But in other Bayern news, they have accepted our offer for David Alaba. So we're going to give him a four-year contract, 35,000 pounds, and a crucial first-team player. And hopefully he accepts that. Hopefully we have more luck than we did with Bernd Leno. But we get some really bad news because David Alaba has declined our transfer offer. He doesn't want to leave where he's at. He likes where he's living. So we're going to up the offer a little bit more to 41,000 pounds. That's more than he's making at Bayern. And we're going to tell him that he's going to be a crucial first team player, give him a four-year contract. And hopefully that will bring him. But these kind of things are really, really hard to uh, get through because when a player doesn't want to leave where they're at, you have to give them an astronomical offer to get them away from the team that they're at. And once again, we see that he doesn't want to leave. He uh, can be persuaded, but it's probably with more money than we have at the moment. So we're going to look to some alternatives, some more players that we can buy on deadline day to hopefully strengthen the squad. And my line of thought was maybe I should look for some offensive players because if you score enough goals, you're going to win the game. You may concede eight or nine, but if you score 10, you're going to win the game. And I wanted someone, of course, that was really, really fast, uh, someone to back up uh, Nathan Dyer because right now we really don't have any cover for him. Uh, we have cover for... Uh, Jesse Rodriguez, we have Routledge, we have people like that, but as of right now, we don't have a ton of options to back up Dyer. I've seen some of you are really high on Pablo Hernandez, but for me, he's just not a player that I would like to play with. Uh, I think it's just because his pace is below par for me. Um, he's just not fast enough. He's not getting into the areas that I want him to be in to take advantage of his skills that he already has. And someone that's really, really fast and young is Jody Lukoki, plays for Ajax. And so we're going to go ahead and put in an offer for him. Uh, 1.2 million is what he's worth. And so we're just going to send that their way. And hopefully we can secure his signature before the day's end. But luckily, Ajax accept our offer for Lukoki. And so we're going to go straight to contract negotiations. 
We're going to give him 5,000 pounds, four years. And I kind of struggled to say what his squad role would be, and I eventually settled on squad rotational player. Uh, but we have to get this right the first time because we are out of time. We have one hour to tie this up. And sadly, I didn't get it right. He wants a bigger role in the squad than what we were offering. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you don't handle a transfer deadline day. Bayern actually came out quite well. They uh, got Aguero for 38 million pounds, uh, and they also kept David Alaba. But for us, we didn't get a replacement for Vorm. We have Trimmel, who is just god-awful in goal. And we also didn't get any more fullbacks. Uh, right now, we don't have many great right backs and left backs, and that's something that I was really looking to reinforce in the window. But of course, as we saw earlier, Alaba didn't want to come. And right now, I think we have Tian Dali, I think is how you say his name. He's our, really our best fullback right now. And uh, while he's doing okay, there's some, there's other people that I really want to get in the next window that will really bring out some more strengths in that area. But to take our minds off of the horrible transfer deadline day, we had a game against Sunderland where hopefully we could return to winning form. And you saw there, uh, Augustine asked if he could start the game, and I said, yeah, sure, why not? You've been doing really, really well so far, so I'm going to put you in. And while De Guzman is probably the better player out of him and Augustine, Augustine's actually going to be here next season because De Guzman is actually just on loan for us. So uh, Augustine's going to have to step up next season and become a regular first-teamer if he's going to have any chance of staying with us. And so this game is just a perfect opportunity for him to show his true colors and really make an impression for the manager. And this was a game that was going to make impressions for a lot of our younger players. Jesse Rodriguez has, of course, already made an impression. He starts the move with one of his signature cutbacks. It'll fall to Lumu, who has a cutback of his own. He'll have a shot. It's eventually blocked, but it'll fall back to him. And with a true poacher's effort, he buries it into the back of the net. Give me that goal, he says. We really should have been two ahead through a Jesse Rodriguez effort, but our worst enemy, the crossbar, has once again kept out a shot. And then Sunderland would come on the attack, taking a play out of our very own playbook. They would cut back, dribble into the box, square it to their striker, and he would just roll it right into the net. Campbell with his goal, and it's easy as that. Augustine would later get a perfect chance to show why he deserves to stay in the team, but he would shank a shot wide, spurning a perfect chance to put us ahead. With all of these missed chances, Sunderland knew we were there for the taking, and they would have a shot which would bounce off both of the posts, come out, and eventually fall to Stephen Fletcher, who would just bury it into the bottom corner to put them ahead 2-1. And that's how we would go into halftime behind 2-1 to Sunderland at home, and we knew we had to pull this game out somehow. And that somehow would come from who else but Jesse Rodriguez, J-Rod, dribbling down the touchline. He would cut inside, have one of his signature curled shots. It would be blocked, but Lumu would be in the perfect place at the perfect time to have that header to get his second goal of the game and put us level. That's when J-Rod smelled blood. And just like the predator that he is, he pounced upon it. He would get the ball on the wing. He would cut inside, just abusing that fake shot. Dribble through the defenders. What defenders? This is Sunday League and would blast it over the bar. But he wasn't done. He knew he was close to getting his goal. Again, he would get it on the wing. He would dribble through the defenders once again. How do they not know he's going to cut inside and then would just roll it into the net to put us ahead 3-2. And that's how it would end. The Spanish conquistador Jesse Rodriguez delivering us the crucial three points against the Black Cats. And the press are raving about Augustine, saying he is in super form, and I would have to agree, he had a really good game uh, besides that missed chance where he really should have had a goal. But other than that, he had a really, really great game. And there we see we have uh, openings for Ireland and Finland that they may be coming our way for international management. Now I was going to ask you guys, what do you think about international management? Uh, I've played it before, and it kind of seems like just an afterthought. Uh, I don't think that they put too much depth into it. But if the right team comes along, then there's no way I can say no to it. But we have to focus on our club duties for now, and we have another game against Aston Villa. And during this game, the Villa defense were just going under the Spanish Inquisition, and the question was, why can't you stop me? He would get in the box, have a nice spin and turn, would square it to Michu, and Michu would have a toe poke, and it would be blocked off the line by the defender. But Michu would get a chance to right his wrongs when he would receive a beautiful ball from Nathan Dyer. He would dribble, cut inside, and have a shot with his stronger left foot, but it would bounce off the bar and go out. 
but that wouldn't be it from Michu. He would get another ball from Jesse Rodriguez, who is just causing havoc on the wing. He would get inside, have a perfect gap to shoot with his right foot, and it would bounce off the bar again. And just like that, Michu should have had a hat trick, but instead he's going to go home, call his boot sponsor, and say this just isn't working out. But Lucas Silva, the Brazilian, was sick of seeing chances wasted and would just roll it into the bottom corner to put us ahead 1-0. That Lucas Silva goal would have us going into halftime ahead 1-0, but anyone that plays on World Class knows that one goal just isn't enough to win. We would be able to hold on until late in the game, but Charles and Zogbia would have us sweating in the 84th minute. The shot from Gabby Agbonlahor luckily went wide, but a few minutes later, we wouldn't be that lucky. Villa were just able to impose their will on us, and after a lovely passing move back and forth, back and forth, it would eventually fall to Clark, who would just float it into the top corner to put them level at 1-1. Last minute goals are always disappointing. It feels like FIFA is just against you and it wants to win, and if it wants to win, then it's gonna win, and that's exactly how that game against Villa felt. But one player that played really, really well and he got the main of the match award for it was Lucas Silva. You don't hear me talk about him a lot just because he plays a very uh, unglorious, unspectacular role just as a holding midfielder. But he's really the buy of the last transfer window. You always hear me talk about J-Rod and uh, you know Nathan Dyer, people like that. But Lucas Silva, he's always in the right spot at the right time and just makes really, really great interceptions and really great plays. And another thing on transfers, uh, you guys are leaving me really awesome suggestions on who to buy. There's two people in particular that I know I'm going to pick up, but you're not going to see me pick those people up until I think it's the next summer window because I played a bunch of games before I even started editing the series, so I'm quite a bit ahead of where you guys are watching now. But that's where this episode is going to end. Again, uh, a like or a subscription is always appreciated if you like the series, and I will catch you next episode. Have a good day.